going to talk about uh, the Curly House. My husband and I are the owners. Um, my husband has passed. Uh, one of the mottos of this home was this. Dream no small dreams, for they have no power to move the hearts of men. And that was written by Gaete, and, and that was my husband and I's motto for a long time, because these stories are no small stories that I will tell you. Four children were, were born to the couple who built the house, uh, John and Rosa Crilly, and uh, the oldest one would be Bill, and they've all passed, but the oldest one would be Bill, and he had a, he had a, um, a relationship with, um, he met Cecil B. DeMille's uh, when he uh, had his business in California, and they became close friends. He wanted to become a priest, so um, the Krillies funded his uh, studies in the seminary, and he became Father John Holly, and he was in the Sioux City Diocese for a long time. He was to board the Titanic from Southampton on its maiden voyage uh, from there to, to New York and somehow he didn't get there in time so he missed the boat and uh, did not die until sometime in the 60s or 70s. And he decorated all of the Catholic churches in the area of Danbury, Carroll, Breda, all around the area and he used the finest um, gold, gold leaf paint and he studied at the uh, Art Institute in Chicago and, um, and that's, um, he happened to be a brother-in-law of the people who built the house. So I believe a brother-in-law and we had a close relative. So he did the decorations and uh, the seven murals that are painted on the walls, including uh, the, the walls that look like castled brick. He did all those by hand. And he had murals on the ceilings as well. Um, over time, they were covered, except one of the murals that, that could be restored by, by anybody. Uh, it, it does have gold leaf paint and it's, it's, it was also um, very beautiful. With the house, there's a, there's a wash house. The wash house I converted into a garage and maybe um, it was done before, long before our time there. But the wash house had a chimney and, um, and then some kind of a, a stove in there to heat and it was right at the end of the sidewalk by the back door and that's where the wash house was. And they had their own water system, their own heat system. Uh, the house was totally self-contained with anything that they possibly needed. Um, and and the, heat, the water was heated 
it was pumped to the attic, and in the attic um, was a, a container that, some kind of a, a tank that held the water, and then it would heat up there, and then it would go to the basement, and it would have hot, they would have hot water in the basement when it came time to move the wash from the wash house into the basement. And in the backyard was a grove of fruit trees, and I believe they were apple trees, and Aunt Rosa did all of her own canning and all of her own all of her own food preparation, like they did in those days, you know, in the um, early 1900s. And the house also has a walk-in pantry, and the walk-in pantry is actually the floor plan is still there, but um, the new uh, peninsula with the stove uh, was was placed in there. And before we built the house, or we moved into the house, someone had taken that wall out uh, to the pantry, but the back wall with the glass doors on that side are still there. And that's what the pantry looked like on the other side as well, and that's where Aunt Rosa made her pies and did all of her baking. And then she would pass those through the pass-through, which would be on the opposite side of where she made the pies, and she would pass them through to, to the dining room. When the family members died, like Uncle John, they had a wake service in the house. And, and if you close the pocket doors between the parlor and the, the music room, um, the casket would be on the side of the music room, so if you came in the front door, you could see the casket. And my husband remembers, um, he remembered staying there and sleeping on a black leather love seat uh, in the parlor on the other side of, of the pocket doors the, night, the nights that they didn't want to leave the corpse there alone. <laughs> so. So he remembered that and I thought, okay, they had the wake service in the home in those days. And now that we're in the, the middle parlor where that, the white fireplace sits, that room had dark green velvet curtains that matched the murals in that room. And they were beautiful green velvet curtains. And I did that a few years back and the sun faded them real bad. So I, had to, so I had to take them down, but dark green velvet in the parlor. And they could have also been in the, in the front parlor, which I call the music room. He was, um, his, his granddaughter lives in Danbury as we speak, but he would uh, check every single piece of lumber, every stick of lumber for any kind of um, um, anything that might be wrong with it, he would check every single piece. So nothing went into that house without being checked and double checked. <laughs>